that up the week ahead. You will touch uh, his body. We think of Allison. We think of Crystal. We think of those with that stomach virus going around. Uh, the McPhees who battled uh, sickness that you'd encourage them. Um, just seems endless for them and others. We lift up Debbie Cameron, Lord Jesus, and the challenges with those sores. And Oh, Lord, would you just encourage her today? Um, yeah, we desperately need you. I think we all could say that in different ways. And uh, we're dependent upon you. So we pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Just a really super quick word this morning. It's so awesome to hear testimonies. I was thinking in Acts chapter 14, uh, when Paul and Barnabas returned, it says they just shared everything God did on their missions trip, right? So we were living out the scripture today. And I think that's really cool again, um, as the body of Christ, all churches, and the unity of those who went down from different churches to minister to people from different churches. We're all a part of God's kingdom who believe in Jesus. Amen. So just uh, three verses this morning, and we'll just talk a bit about Palm Sunday. It says, finally, because we're going through the book of Philippians chapter 3. Interesting, he says, finally, he has two more chapters to go. So whoever says in my sermons, when I say finally, and you're like, well, he was only halfway through. So uh, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, comma, rejoice in Christ Jesus, comma, new thought, and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul after talking of the mind of Christ, goes on to a big theme in the book that we've talked about already, and that is rejoicing in the Lord, having joy in God. I love it too as well that he says, for me to write the same things. He's already talked about this. I think I mentioned before that the word joy or rejoice is multiple, multiple, multiple times in this book. But he's not apologizing for saying the same thing. And... If you have kids and you say the same thing and it's about Jesus, don't apologize. Do you hear me? You keep giving the message. You know what I mean? And sometimes even when I come up here or we hear testimony, so we've heard that before. It is not tedious. We need to hear the same message of the truth of God's word. Amen? And his, his message is rejoice in the Lord. Beware of dogs. It's not talking about nice little dogs who live in your house. We're not against dogs here. The Bible's not against dogs, if you're wondering. But in that day, the dogs mentioned would have been scavengers, would have been snarly, right? Wouldn't have been ones you want to get close to. I was bit by a dog as a young child, and I actually have a little fear of new dogs. Like, that's the kind of thing, like dogs who, who bring fear, yeah, beware of people like that who are biting, right? And what are they doing? They're evil workers. Um, he's talking about legalists here, if you know the flow of his law. He's talking about uh, people who say you have to be, use the words mutilation, because he's talking about those who said, though you'd have to be circumcised to become a Christian. So he's talking about anyone who would say you have to do an action to uh, be a Christian other than belief or added on to belief. Now, Paul has talked about this a lot in Galatians and, and the same themes kind of bit in Romans. But he's saying rejoice in the Lord in Christ. I'm not going to be upset about telling you that again and again. But be careful of people who are evil, who are snapping at you, who say that you have to be circumcised or do some product of a work to be a Christian. 
But understand, we are the true circumcision. We are Christians who worship God in spirit. We rejoice in Jesus because he's the one who's done the work. And we have no confidence in the flesh. So we can't come here this morning and say, well, I'm a Christian, I was baptized. I'm a Christian, I had a good week. I'm a Christian, I read my Bible. No, 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 no. No confidence in the flesh. And next time, whoever does it after Easter, will get into that Paul thought he had much confidence. Hebrew of Hebrews, right? Like, fill it in, Mr. Religion. But yet he didn't have Christ. And we are called to worship God in spirit. This morning, Palm Sunday, we're called to rejoice. And it really is a day of rejoicing. They celebrated Jesus as he entered one week before he would die on the cross. And you all know the story. It's actually one of the only stories that's mentioned in all four Gospels. But they took those palm branches, kind of what we saw this morning, maybe a little bigger, and they laid them down, and some laid their clothing down, and Jesus, as Jim mentioned, rode that donkey that had never been ridden before. And they shouted at the top of their lungs. They worshipped, they praised. It says it wasn't a quiet kind of thing in the Gospels. It says it was quite loud. I said, Hosanna, right? What is Hosanna, Savior? Palm branches mean victory. It would have mean victory for the Jewish people. So what they were saying is Jesus actually prophesying, taking the Old Testament scripture of Zechariah happening, is our Savior, our Messiah. Praise God, right? Worship Him. It's interesting, in some of the Gospels, Especially, I think it's Luke, it says they did that because they saw the works he had done, right? And they're praising God. They finally believe the Messiah has come to set them free. They see power in Jesus. They see what he can do. And they are super excited. Not everyone was excited, right? You know the story. The Pharisees weren't too happy, and that's recorded in the Gospels as well. These legalists, maybe, that we just talked about in Philippians, they're not happy, and they're like, shh, quiet down, right? Now, obviously, they're not happy because the people are claiming that Jesus is the Messiah, and they thought that was blasphemy, and they didn't want that for many reasons because actually John's Gospel said that would take their place, and they were upset. And Jesus tells them, I tell you, this is in Luke as well, that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. In Mark, it tells us the Pharisees a little after this are indignant. As you say, they're angry. They're upset. Calm down. It's interesting when we think of rejoice in the Lord Philippians and we think of this as they rejoice and they praise and they worship God on Palm Sunday, what we're doing today. We know it's nothing in us, right? It's all in him. It's all what he's done. And we're going to celebrate all week the magnificence of Christ. Just Two little things. You know, the people thought, and you probably all know this, because all these people who are praising and shouting, yay, you're victorious, you're our savior, were the same people who shouted, crucify him, one week later. And it shows that we're a fickle people, but one of the things they didn't understand, which was probably the big problem, And it really is a perspective thing for us. Is we love to praise Jesus when things go our way. Do you know that? I think I heard, well, I think Kendra, right? In a sense, we use Jesus for ourselves. Like, it's the bailout. He's he's my life jacket. He's, I'm in trouble. I need Jesus. Save me from this problem on earth, Jesus. And of course, God is here to help us, right? There's absolutely no doubt 
when, when things get rocky, what do we do? You know, I'm a great crisis prayer. <laughs> um, and we ask God to move. But when we don't see God move, maybe in the earthly, fleshly things the way we want, isn't it interesting how our mouths stop from praise to blame to discontent to totally different? You see, Jesus is going to make it clear even to his disciples in terms of perspective. He's not coming or he didn't come to save the Jews from Rome. He didn't come to, to stop the problems of earth only. He came to die for their sins, the Messiah, to give them eternal life and forgiveness. See, the story, whether things work out for us in this world, as we just heard, whether we're happy or sad, whether we have a little or not, no matter what our culture's like, this is not the end of the story. And so t- sometimes we get so wrapped up in the day-to-day that our perspective is so messed up sometimes, myself at the top of the list. We see our problems as mountains, which sometimes they can feel, and I'm not dismissing those. But there's something way above that Jesus died for you, and eternally, forever, you are free. And that changes how you live amongst the trees, amongst the problems. And that actually helps you to rejoice, not just on Palm Sunday, But all through, when things don't go your way and you're not freed from Rome and this one you thought was going to save you from all your problems, but Jesus is thinking, you have a greater issue and I came to set you free. It's not external. His work is internal and it changes us forever. Amen? You see when I was thinking about this and just the Pharisees a little bit and they're indignant, like shut them up. Like you, you're acting like fools. Can you, uh, you know, like, why are you worshiping him? It made me think of David. Remember when he brought the ark in, in second Samuel, I believe chapter six. And then one of his wives is Mikel is up there in the window. And I'm not saying if he had clothes on or not, but he lost his robe somehow. We don't know if something's underneath. And he was dancing and whirling and praising God. And she comes down and like, how can you, as the king, act like that and praise God? You know, like, you made a fool of yourself, basically. And he makes this statement, I will be even more. Almost in a sense, crazy, letting go to praise the one who loves me who's in charge, who's sovereign, who cares for me. And it's interesting when we live only for Jesus and worshiping Jesus and knowing what Jesus has done and letting go of our, I don't, this is just for me, maybe a little of our pride and how we look or it being about us and even how we should worship and saying people should worship like us. And I'm talking either way. But if our heart is to him and we're worshiping, I don't care what you think of me. Because I'm worshiping the one who saved me for eternity. And it's interesting, even in that story with David, it says when he had the ark, and if you read it in 2 Samuel chapter 6, it said he could take six steps, remember? And he stopped everybody, and what did they do? They sacrificed and worshiped God. They rejoiced in God. They sacrificed an animal. Now, we don't sacrifice now. Jesus, who we're celebrating, sacrificed. But sometimes our human strength, the number six, is just a completion of what we can do. And don't you find that? Like you come to the end of yourself in a day or a week, and you have to turn to God and just worship him. Thank you, God. I can't do it. Thank you, God, you died for me. Thank you, God. Oh, man, in my human strength, I'm not enough. But I praise you. And however you do that, 
however you whirl who God's made you to be, not thinking of others, it is a letting go of me and my pride and what I want and what I think should happen and whether God's going to save us from this evil government or people at work who are bad. No, I'm going to praise you, God. You are the one who came. You are the one who died, Jesus. You are the one who set me free. And life could stink, but I'm going to rejoice Again, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. That's what Paul's saying. Again, I tell you, I'm not tedious. You need to hear this. Not in our flesh, our human strength, but we're going to look at him, worship in the spirit, says in Philippians. The Lord who has set us free. We've talked about joy before, and I don't want to be tedious again and (laughs) go through this. And we heard about culture and joy. And and just to close, and we see Jesus. But you know, joy, the biggest thing, joy comes from a thankful heart. You know why it's, you know, culturally, I don't know, you put people anywhere, (laughs) you could get the wickedness of the heart come out anywhere. People are wicked wherever you go, by the way. The problem is, that was what said, sometimes we we can be more discontent because we think we deserve more. And we lose our thanks, you know? And it doesn't just have to be things. It can be in life. But this joy we're talking about, that Paul's been talking about the whole book, is a choice for me to say, thank you, Jesus. The people were looking at themselves, and so they turn. The Pharisees were looking at others, right? You can't act like that. But Jesus tells us, look at me. Celebrate me. Celebrate me. I am worthy. He's fulfilling scripture, right, Zechariah? He's going to die and rise again. That's what we're celebrating. This morning, no matter where you are at, can we hear this? Whether we're at home or in Honduras or Florida, wherever, rejoice in the Lord. He is good. He has set you free. He has taken your sin. He has taken your shame. He's taken your guilt. He's taken your loneliness and replaced it with his Holy Spirit that lives in you. He is sovereign over your problems. Your future is guaranteed. We can rejoice in Jesus today. Amen? Amen. Let's make it as we leave. It's a rejoice. It's a rejoicing day. Father God, thank you this morning. Would you help us? Maybe this morning we're looking at ourselves and our problems, which is real. But would you help us? Jesus, help us not to look at others and determine how they should worship. Lord, help us just to look at you. We have so much to praise you for. As we're about to celebrate communion, we fix our eyes on Christ. We rejoice. You truly have set us free in the depth of our heart, even though we might feel enslaved in this world and our flesh. You have conquered sin. As we look at those palm branches, little pictures as the kids came in, victory, that's what they represent. You won the victory. You have set us free for eternity. Hosanna, Christ, 
the one who saves this morning. I don't know if all in this room know Jesus. I pray so, but if you don't, He has died for you. He's forgiven, but you have to receive it and accept it. Mm -hmm. The victory is available for each and every one of us, but it comes through belief, not through any work or sign like circumcision or good work or giving. No, that's not what it's about. It's believing, trusting, repenting from your way and believing and accepting Jesus. And if you haven't done that, that I'm not here to give you a sales pitch. I'm just here to give you an invitation. We don't want your money. We don't want to sign you up to serve. We want you to be free for eternity. We want you to know forgiveness. We want you to know hope. We want you to know the power of the Holy Spirit within you. We want life to be different because Christ has made it different. Yeah, just in this moment, it's not about religion. Jesus says, look at me. Look at him at the cross. See his love. See his forgiveness. Believe in your heart. Confess it to someone and you will be saved forever and ever and ever. Lord, we rejoice this morning as we think of you as the Messiah and dying for us. So in this moment, we worship. The elements are in the back. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we The table is open for you. Just may this be a time of worship. If you need prayer for anything, there'll be people who would love to pray with you as well. Let's celebrate and rejoice in Christ. Yes, hallelujah. I was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The branch was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You held me in your sight So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, free my soul. The first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have. darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. And now thou hast no sin.
stronger. There is nothing stronger than the wonder working power of the Sons and daughters, we are ransomed by our Father through the blood. There, there is nothing stronger than the wonder-working power of the Rejoice, amen. Let's take the bread together. I love community, but real community is always based upon Jesus, amen. And right now we're having common thoughts, rejoicing in Christ. Together, communion, common thoughts of Christ. Praise God. Jesus, you are worthy. We praise you. You are our Savior. You are our Redeemer. You have won the victory. Amen. We are victorious. And we worship you. We rejoice. We give you all glory. We whirl around in our hearts, in our actions of praise. God, you are so faithful. Let's take the juice together. Father God, this week as we move ahead, would you continually 
give us a mind to meditate on what you've done this week. But may we rejoice that we are children of God. In the midst of your issues, my issues, and I know there's a lot where people were in this room, we choose to look at you because you are faithful and you are good. Praise Jesus today. I pray his grace upon you. I pray his love upon you. I pray his strength and boldness as you share what he has done in your life. Have a great week. Be blessed. Amen.